Hello everyone, I hope you are all well and healthy. As you see, we decided to create a video for the last experiment of Physics 106. I guess many of you have never been here before. So here is one of the general physics laboratories located in the Department of Physics. Normally you are supposed to conduct experiments with us here in this torture chamber. <coughs> I mean, these labs. But without you, here is nothing more than some dusty room. Anyway, let us start. As you already learned, a charge moving in a magnetic field experiences a force perpendicular to the directions of both the charge's velocity and the magnetic field. The current in a wire is a stream of moving charges, so we can extend our theory to a current carrying wire. The magnetic force on a wire with length L inside a magnetic field B carrying a current I is defined as this. Even better, the wire and the magnetic field are perpendicular in this experiment. Therefore, we can use simple multiplication instead of a cross product. This is the experiment setup. First, we have a current generator. It supplies the desired amount of current to our circuit. The current value shown on the display is in amperes. This is a sensitive digital balance. We can reset the reading when necessary by pressing the tear button. When the value is fixed, this circle is shown on the display, then you can use that value. In order to find the force acted on the device, you need to convert the mass value to weight using the gravity of earth. Also keep in mind that the values shown on the display is in grams. This is a PCB, a printed circuit board with embedded conductive pads. It has five connectors at the top. When two of them are connected to the current generator using cables, current flows through the suitable pad. The PCB has two layers. The back layer is added in order to increase the length of one of the pads. The horizontal section of the pad at the bottom will be placed inside the magnetic field. The length of that pad with non-zero current is important. The conductor holder is used to connect the cables and the PCB properly. It also indicates the relevant length values between the connections. Here, it is fixed on the metal support on the digital balance. Lastly, we have a set of magnets. These magnets are quite strong, so one needs to use them carefully. The poles of the magnets are oriented this way. Therefore, there is more or less a uniform magnetic field between these two. And now we are going to prepare the setup. The conductor holder is already fixed, so we attach the PCB to the conductor holder. We place the set of magnets so that the lower end of the PCB is just between the magnets. Make sure that the set of magnets is not touching to the PCB. Turn on the digital balance. It takes a while to initialize. And connect the cables. Finally, turn on the current generator. We can see that the digital balance shows a non-zero value. The magnetic field exerts a force on the current carrying conductor inside the PCB. Because of the law of action and reaction, the same amount of force with the opposite direction is applied to the set of magnet itself. That's why we see a non-zero value, even though the PCB itself is not touching the digital balance. Now our setup is ready. There will be three runs for each part of the experiment. If the last digit of your student ID is 1, 4 or 7, use the round 1. If the last digit of your student ID is 2, 5 or 8, use the round 2. If the last digit of your student ID is 0, 3, 6 or 9, use the round 3. If you use the data of the wrong round, you will not get any points. In part A, we will use a fixed length and change the current. This way, we can draw a force versus current plot and calculate the magnetic field strength.
part B, we will fix the current and use all the possible wire lengths from 1 to 7 cm. This way, we can draw a force versus wire length plot and again calculate the magnetic field strength. Then we can check if our magnetic field strength results in part A and B are similar.
This is the end of the data collection part and the video. Now you can continue filling your report. Lastly, good luck on your finals and hope to see you in campus one day.